As we know, the Xbox Scorpio is coming out next year, and the same can probably be said for the PlayStation 4 Neo, but of course we don't know for sure what that particular console is actually doing. But of course, what this does mean is a sort of signal for change in how consoles are actually sold. It is a supposed end to the typical console life cycle. We've seen a lot of comments and discussion around this idea since the rumours began months ago about both of these devices, but now three of the biggest publishers in the industry have shared some of their thoughts regarding the Neo and Scorpio. And we have executives from EA, Ubisoft and Take-Two, and they all spoke to games industry about the benefits of the supposed mid-generation upgrades. Which is essentially what the Scorpio and PlayStation 4 Neo are, given that, well, with the Scorpio we know that it can play all Xbox One games and Xbox One games, you know, there's not going to be games that you can only play on the Scorpio according to what Microsoft has said. So it's a fair enough assessment to say, hey look, it's an incremental upgrade, even though it is a huge upgrade in terms of power. Obviously we don't know really anything about what the Neo is doing, we've got a lot of speculation and rumour, but no actual facts. However, I've got a bit of a statement here first to begin from the EA Global Publishing Chief, Laura Miel, and she said, quote, I actually see it more as an incredibly positive evolution of the business strategy for players and for our industry and definitely for EA. The idea that we potentially not have an end of a cycle and a beginning of cycle, I think is a positive place for our industries to be and for all of the commercial partners as well as players. Now, just a moment ago I spoke on the nice bonus for the Scorpio, how, how you're basically not going to have any games sort of locked to the Scorpio, you know, the Xbox One's going to play everything, the Scorpio's going to play everything, but better, basically. And the Ubisoft head of EMEA, Alan Core, basically praised the how these upgrades would not be split in the community because of that compatibility, at least for a while. And he said, quote, I think with the evolution of technology, it's better that we had than what we had to do before, doing a game for next gen and a different game from scratch for the former hardware. Now we can take the best of the next console, but still have a super good quality for the current console without breaking the current community up. As for take two, well, the boss Strauss Zelnick, he basically sees this as a change, rather, as a... Let me try again with some English, so sorry. A change as a step towards releasing games without having to worry too much about the different platforms that you own, because in theory, do you probably run on everything. Don't know if it'll go quite that way, Strauss, but let's go with what he said first. Quote, and sure, constantly more powerful hardware gives us an opportunity, but it would be a great to get it to a place where you don't have a sign curve anymore. But I do see the sign curve flattening, but I'm not sure I agree it's going away yet. This doesn't change any of our activities. We still have to make the very best products in the market, and we have to push technology to, abs to its absolute limit to do so. So some rather interesting thoughts from some pretty high up players in three of the biggest companies in gaming right now. And there are definitely benefits, potential benefits for this style of console generation. Now as we've discussed before, both the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 were underpowered when they came out in comparison to PC hardware. So I'm stoked to see them doing this because the Scorpio is a powerhouse and I'm really excited to see the official specs of the Neo and to see what happens to console gaming versus PC gaming and the console generation cycle and everything like that. I mean it's not really that short a life cycle really I mean the last life cycle we had for the console was insanely long but before that about four to five years was about right so by the time these consoles come out the PlayStation 4 and Xbox one would have been out about four years I know that sounds weird but it's true so it wouldn't have even been terrible for them to have a full console upgrade but instead they've gone for this iterative using the same thing you can play the same games but hey here's better hardware type thing that was the most roundabout way of saying it but I got there in the end which is actually better for the consumer in a way. Obviously, you don't have to cough up if you want. You can still play the same games, but if you want to cough up and get the better performance, I would assume, and better graphics again, I assume, because, you know, I even see the Scorpio that I played one, then, you know, why would you not do that if you have the cash to do so? So it's definitely going to be an interesting time with the release of both the Neo and X, uh, sorry, S S Scorpio. Words failing me today, apparently. And I'm very curious to see what Sony brings to the table. There's been plenty of reports saying it's coming out this year, but I, I really doubt that, to be honest. So we're going to have to see. The future is going to be interesting for gaming in general, especially in the console gaming space. And even if you decide to stay on PC gaming, it will only improve PC games as well. Because, of course, we'll have better hardware to work with and the console side of things. So, again, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.